We're at Schwartz's, one of Mordecai Richler's favorite delis, and I'm surrounded by three of his oldest pals, Bill Weintraub, John Aylin, Terry Mosher. Mordecai will have been passed away 10 years, but we're wondering, do people still remember? Do people still notice? Do people still care? Is there a huge vacuum as a result of our leading literary lion no longer with us. Yes, he's not featured enough in universities as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's certainly remembered uh, more than other people who sort of seem to dwindle away for a while and then wait a hundred years to be rediscovered. His literary reputation has actually grown in the ten years since he died. And I agree with you that he's maybe not enough taught in universities, but his reputation and presence is amazingly strong, despite the fact he's he's not here. And I knew Mordecai much more as a friend than as a, a mentor, and I, I miss him a lot. What I really miss about Mordecai is to see a writer uh, working with such amazing courage. He had great courage in what he was turning out in his first uh, novels, uh, Breaking New Ground, but he also had personal courage, and uh, that never ceased to am amaze me. I remember having lunch with him once in the Madres Olivier downtown, and uh, we were sitting at a very small table, the very back of the room, and I just happened to notice Brian Mulrooney coming in. And uh, Mordecai had just written a piece in some magazine uh, saying Brian Mulrooney is such a liar that he doesn't know what the truth is. He just lies to keep in practice. <laughs> and he just doesn't even know he's lying, but he is a li So I said to Mordecai, there is our man uh, Mulrooney. Why don't you we both go out the back way so we don't have to pass him? Oh, to hell with it, says Barney Kai. And we got up and we walked by Mulrooney and I'm waiting. And Mulrooney looks up and says, Mordecai, how are you? The old glad-handing politician.